good evening and uh, thank you sir uh, for your kind introduction and uh, thank you uh, lecton synergy uh, for uh, inviting me as a speaker uh, for the topic so uh, without uh, delay i just uh, want to move on next so uh, i will discuss uh, for the next 15 minutes on the evolution of the dpp4 inhibitors and why the dpp4 inhibitors are going ahead of the others in different class of oral anti diabetics and then the vildagliptin why it is pioneer in the dpp4 inhibitor class and what are the evidences to say in favor of it like that so why the most commonly used the combination of the metformin and sulfonylurea because of its cost effectiveness as a therapeutic strategy that is worldwide to achieve the goal of age one c close to 6.5 or 7 in most so of the population the except some few now coming to why this cost effectiveness comes come because it is not cost effective any more to how because hypoglycemia which is a major concern of this combination of sulfonylurea metformin costs a lot when it happens and again also the weight gain but what happens beyond the glucose we have to think because the current concept of not only the plasma hba1c but to preserve the beta cell so the incretin based this dpp4 inhibitors that have made a paradigm shift in the diabetes care because it preserves the beta cell and others i will discuss so what are the paradigm shift of glycemic control to the paradigm shift of the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes because we think in the past that the balance between the tight glycemic control and hypoglycemia but we are thinking that insulin resistance versus secretion now and achieving the glycemic control without hypoglycemia to importance of beta cell dysfunction the preservation of beta cell uh, preservation that is important so the future trend is to early achievement of the near normal glycemic control aiming at the beta cell preservation and that is the beta cell of diabetic complication that is uh, to keep the patient healthy for a long run so the current evidence that suggests the type 2 diabetes never develops unless the beta cell fails to compensate the insulin resistance the rapid rise in understanding of the pathogenesis result in change in the treatment approach beyond insulin so coming to the evolution of the dpp4 inhibitors starting in the very early kind of 1905 where the incretin was defined then 1930 where the incretin demonstrated 1964 where incretin concept came and 1983 when the glp1 discovered in 1990 the first glp1 study in type 2 diabetes starting in 1995 the glp1 dpp4 the basic studies were done in 2005 around the animal studies and the first class trial of the dpp4 inhibitor that was done by the novartis and 2005 when the vildagliptin clinical trial came into the uh, uh, population coming to what are the physiological roles of the glp1 there's a multiple effects on the plasma glucose because it actually improves the glucose uptake in fat and muscle tissue reducing the insulin resistance it suppresses the glucagon secretion that is inadequate glucagon uh, separation is one of the important fact of diabetes it also takes over that it also acute beta cell function that improves the insulin secretion at the same time the chronic beta cell function improvement in the form of increase Increases the insulin biosynthesis. It promotes the beta cell differentiation and also decreases the beta cell apoptosis. So, what are the advantages overall in the DPP4 uh, uh, inhibitors? Because DPP4 inhibitor has some peculiar advantage in type 2 diabetes management, like its efficacy, like its minimal risk of hypoglycemia, like its neutrality from the wet skin point of view, well tolerated cardiovascular safety to some extent, durability, low hypoglycemic uh, variability, and also no significant weight gain. Why the build up lifting? in the this class is uh, taken in account because we all know the novartis has honored with the invitation of the name of the new class the stem of all dp4 inhibitors in type 2 diabetes is leptin it comes from will the will hold uh, and again the dipeptidyl amino peptides then the d and p the gli that comes to suffix for the anti diabetic agents involved in the glucose and insulin and tin that is a enzyme inhibitor so gal was uh, named after the will the leptin from novartis So, the, what are the pharmacokinetic advantages of the vildagliptin molecule over the other gliptins? Because of its certain differences in structure, inhibitor type, timeline, metabolism, and renal elimination. As we all know, the vildagliptin and the the, uh, uh, the succagliptin. So, these are two actually the substrate enzyme blocker, whereas the sitagliptin and linagliptin is the competitive blocker. Next slide. Next slide, sir. Okay. So there is a tight binding of this vildagliptin molecule to the DPP1 inhibitor. So it's a substrate light blocker versus the inhibitor. But what is the advantage of it, Saxa and Vilda? Because of its slow dissociation. So ultimately, the sitagliptin that binds first, also dissociation is first. But for vildagliptin, when the substrate binding comes, it's fast, tight, and it liberates, and also slow dissociation. At the same time, saxagliptin also showing some result, but vildagliptin superior among the two. Next. 
So here comes the dose-dependent inhibition of citagliptin, a study that shows when there is the, uh, increasing the concentration of citagliptin, then the decreasing TP4 enzyme activity with the increasing inhibition. At the same time, when after the getting neutralization from citagliptin and uh, vildagliptin from TP4 inhibition, with the subsequent dilution, it shows that citagliptin loses its potency, whereas there is reversal of inhibition with the dilution of citagliptin, whereas in case of vildagliptin, the maintenance of inhibition with the dilution even up to 500 milliseconds. Now comes the DPP-4 inhibition over 24 hours, because we all know for any DPP-4 inhibitor, it is more than equals to 80% of DPP-4 inhibition over 24 hours. That is therapeutically necessary for the gliptins to show their fair efficacy. And when the gliptin here shows a greater DPP-4 inhibition, kind of 50 milligram BT shows a 97% inhibition, whereas CETA shows 91%, DINA shows 84.2, and TENILU shows kind of 60% of inhibition. Next. Now, what are the clinical outcomes or evidences in favor of the Vildagliptin? Because we know that among all the default inhibitors, Vildagliptin is known to be effective and safe therapeutic option for the patients of T2DM as monotherapy or in combination with the other molecules. And Vildagliptin is more potent than other D4 inhibitors in suppressing the glucagon causes a less glycemic variation. Because Vildagliptin is one of the molecules that causes, uh, you know, the suppression of glucagon in case of hyperglycemic state, whereas it, uh, not, it actually stimulates slow and secretion in phases of hypoglycemia. So less chance of hypoglycemia and also less glycemic variation. That is a peculiarity of the Vildagliptin molecule. Next. Coming to a comparative study with the Citagliptin, whereas the first in plasma glucose reduction uh, it was studied with the uh, citagliptin with, in combination with the metformin, and it shows the uh, reduction of the fasting plasma glucose in the form of uh, kind of 21.9 milligram per DL, whereas in the citagliptin, I mean, it is 14.5 milligram DL. That is uh, after uh, 14 days of the application of the two molecules, and it was statistically significant. <laughs> now, coming to the other part, that is the glycemic variability. There are multiple uh, uh, metrics because we all know that. Uh, standard deviation, uh, also coefficient of variation, MAGE, MOD, but MAGE is the most commonly used the metric for evaluating the glycemic variability. Here, the study that shows when it compared with the citagliptin, the MAGE reduction uh, in the vildagliptin arm was close to 28.6, whereas in the citagliptin arm is 6.5. So greater reduction in the MAGE with the vildagliptin compared to citagliptin, and that shows the lower glycemic variability in the vildagliptin molecule when compared to citagliptin. This is another study that shows when it compared with the uh, citagliptin, definitely the reduction from not only for the fasting PP, uh, the mean plasma glucose and match, but also the changes in the glucagon and GLP-1. Because in the interprandial levels, the glucagon uh, levels were more suppressed during the uh, interprandial levels in subjects who receive vildagliptin compared to that of the citagliptin. And again, from the next uh, cartoon, it is also uh, shown that the sustained increase during the interprandial period of intact GLP-1 that occurred with the vildagliptin twice daily when treated uh, uh, in compared with that of the citagliptin once daily. So this is the change of the hormonal milieu in the interprandial period that actually causes less glycemic variation and to avoid the hypoglycemia. That is the beauty of the vildagliptin molecule when compared to the other D4 inhibitors like citagliptin. Next. Here again, uh, the greater reduction in the HB1C and fasting plasma glucose with that of the vildagliptin over the other gliptins when compared to the with the CETA and succagliptin Chinese type 2 diabetic individuals. So here the reduction of the HB1C in the vildagliptin after six month therapy was close to 1.4, whereas in citagliptin was close to 1.2 and succagliptin were 1.2%. And ability to achieve the glycemic target of less than 7%, whereas in 65% uh, in case of wild arm, 59% in CETA arm, and SAXA in 59, whereas 6.5%, that is more close without hypoglycemia, that is even in Vildagliptin now close to 36%, whereas in CETA 25 and SAXA in 32%. So Vildagliptin shows a greater ability to achieve a target HB1C close to 7 or less than 6.5 when compared to the other gliptins like CETA and SAXA gliptin. Next. So Vildagliptin and metformin had similar protective effects on the beta cell function. As the area under the curve of the insulin to glucose, it changes in the area under the curve of insulin to glucose, where the non significant in both the groups, the insulin sensitivity out of the metformin at six to 12 months, vildagliptin, there was no change measured in the muscular index and HOMA IR, there's reduction in the insulin resistance, HOMA IR, similar in both the groups and postprandial uh, C-peptide level, there was no change in the postprandial C-peptide level. So the improvement in the beta cell function with the vildagliptin plus metformin combination, newly typed to diagnose uh, uh, T2DM patient, this is a part of the subgroup analysis of the verified study that the newly diagnosed type 2 diabetic patient when treated with the early combination therapy with the subsequent monotherapy that shows the longer durability and also delayed the primary uh, failure of treatment. The, in the subgroup analysis, when we compared the HOMA beta 
that also shows a significant change in the early uh, combination therapy arm. So this is a robust safety profile of the vildagliptin. Hello. Uh, Sorry, yeah. So robust uh, safety profile because it's a randomized open level study that conducted uh, uh, to access the uh, access the efficacy and safety of the D4 inhibitor that shows a zero percent edema, also five percent increase that is minor enzyme uh, uh, liver enzyme salivation, two percent a minimal chance of hypoglycemia. There was some uh, to some extent of abdominal discomfort, a trim of eight percent, two percent had the diarrhea, and there was no uh, uh, adverse effect like nasal sinusitis. So low incidence of hypoglycemia overall, robust safety profile that is uh, well known for the vildagliptin as per the study. So there are different uh, CV studies done, though these are not a major case studies, but uh, there are also 25 phase three clinical trials for more than 13,000 patients in the Swiss et al. That shows vindagliptin was not associated with an increased risk of adjudicated CV events relative to all compartment uh, uh, comparators. Uh, MacMurray et al. They have done a 254 type two diabetic individuals with congestive heart failure. Uh, that is RCT, where vindagliptin has no major effect on the LV ejection fraction. And the other studies also showed that vindagliptin is quite safe. Though some vivid study that shows the increased, uh, uh, you know, the LV endastolic volume and also in the end in systolic volume with the application of uh, vindagliptin, but there are major pitfalls in it in this study. So overall, to say vindagliptin is not unsafe even in the cardiovascular uh, uh, risk, uh, patients with the cardiovascular risk factor to uh, till date the data we have. Next slide. Again, coming to the FDA guidance of the CV safety, FDA requires a company to demonstrate empirically that uh, our developmental drug does not appear to increase the rate of the CV events. So what the requirements are, you know, the CV uh, events adjudication. So here the Vildagliptin meta analysis that is published in 2010, that shows independent adjudication by committee of five cardiologists and one neurologist was there. Now, recruitment of the patients at elevated risk of CV events. And the meta analysis shows more than 15% of patients at the high CV risk, more than 40% of the patients have more than equals to two CV risks like dyslipidemia, hypertension, age more than equals to 65 years. The risk ratio here less than one. And in the meta analysis shows the risk ratio of 0.84. So FDA says if the uh, uh, odds ratio is less than uh, uh, 0.8, then uh, less than 1.3, then definitely the uh, prospective studies are not required to prove the non inferiority of superiority. And upper limit of confidence interval, 95% was 1.3. In the meta-analysis, it was short upper limit of the 95% CI were 1.14. And minimum follow-up required for two years where the duration of the included trials were up to two years. So from this, it is very clear that pendagliptin is not unsafe from cardiovascular point of view. These are the different trials like age, initial, interval, and verify, specifically to say the verify trial, because this is a very important trial in Vildagliptin that shows the early type 2 diabetic patients of less than two years of duration. It was done in 254 centers over 36 countries, and that shows that the early combination when Vildagliptin metformin was given, uh, when compared to the sequential administration of metformin plus Vildagliptin, that shows the early combination has, uh, you know, the longer durability of the type glycemic control at the same time the primary treatment failure was delayed. So that shows a significant reduction in the risk of the time to initial treatment failure, 49% versus the initial monotherapy strategy and early combination uh, treatment strategy of vildagliptin plus metformin confers a robust and durable age balance reduction was also wet neutral. Next. So to summarize my today's talk, so DP4 inhibitor addresses an unmet need in the diabetes management so, so please, previous slide. Oh, and uh, offer several advantages by minimizing the distressing side effects. Vildagliptin has been a pioneer in addressing the unmet scientific needs, had filled some uh, evidence gap uh, with the studies like age, initial, interval, definitely verify, which is very important. And Vildagliptin is pioneer, glyptin, uh, which offers a better efficacy and safety profile, including the cardiovascular safety, which is uh, from the meta-analysis that I've already revealed. Thank you for your kind listening. Thank you.